Hi, and welcome to Monday on the Political Ranter Show. So yes, I am back with another episode, and today I want to talk about three things, which is the current NHS crisis, today's cabinet reshuffle, and the recent events with Donald Trump, because it's literally a whole scenario going on in the UK politics right now. Over the winter, the UK government and the Health Secretary Jeremy Hunt failed to prepare for the winter, because obviously at, at winter time, the NHS is more stretched and more resources need to be shelled out to take care of people during the winter and this was not met by the UK government which caused the winter crisis and now this is seriously messing up the healthcare system. I'm deeply worried about the healthcare in our country right now because since 2010 and since this conservative government has come into power under the coalition and as a majority and then under another support and supply deal cuts to cuts cuts have just been handed down to our NHS and with private companies being allowed to mess with NHS like Virgin which I have now boycotted every Virgin product I can ever find and if you want to join the virgin boycott with me you can so with these countries being allowed to mess with our nhs and being awarded a lot of the contracts from the nhs more contracts are going to private companies than to actual nhs providers and this is worrying and this is being allowed to continue because of the private interests that our government have in private healthcare. It's no secret that the main goal of the Conservative Party is to privatise the NHS because the NHS is simply not giving the resources and it's not given the funds that it needs to stand still. In the Tory budget, it was given 2.6 billion and this was a far cry from the Chiefs of the NHS request of 4 billion. So as we know, it's just not being funded properly and it's just not being cared for. After this winter crisis, never again can the Tories tell you that the NHS is safe in their hands because it's just simply not. Research published in the British Medical Journal did say that nurses rose from 2001 to 2010 under New Labour of 1.6%. 2010 to 2014 under the Conservative government, that rise was just 0.7%. So less workers and less doctors and less nurses are getting into the NHS and more of them are being driven away from the NHS. 100,000 jobs in the NHS right now are vacant, which has led to a job crisis. And this is due to low wages, underfunding, struggling services, all caused by this government's lack of care of our public health care. Because as we know, this government doesn't even believe in public health care, do they? Peace across the country are at a breaking point and this government is still not providing it the extra funds it needed judging from the budget and judging from what the chief of the NHS is saying. I mean who would you trust when it comes to NHS? Would you trust doctors and nurses who actually work in NHS who literally stood together during the last election and in 2015 to tell people to not to vote for the Tories or would you fall for the same old propaganda and same old fake news from the Tory government saying that they are caring for NHS? I mean who would you trust? I know who I would trust. People who actually work in the NHS who tell us not to to vote for the Tories. Prescription charges were introduced and admittedly they have raised millions of pounds for the NHS and that's fine but I don't agree with the premise of charging people for medication that they cannot afford. This government, this NHS faces a 30 billion cut by 2020 and this is so dangerous because this is not providing the healthcare that our country needs and it's not providing the resources that our country needs to thrive. The NHS spends less per person than any other part of the UK and funnily enough England is the only part in the country that votes Tory. I think I'm seeing some correlation here. Every person in the world deserves access to affordable and free medical treatment when they need it and what is providable to them at the point of their need. This is something that cannot be disputed against unless you're a heartless Tory. The NHS is one of the most important institutions that we have ever come up as a country and it's something that needs to be protected and it would be protected under a different left-wing government. That the NHS should be a priority of the next Labour government because it definitely won't be the priority of any Tory government. We all know that any Tory government would happily put the interests of private interests before our public services and they would happily serve our public services for profit because that's what Tories do. The NHS has saved millions and billions of lives across the country since its conception and now we must come together to save it. Ask not what your NHS can do for you. Ask what you would do without no NHS. Oh, I do want to talk about the 
cabinet reshuffle today because I've been literally following it all day on Twitter, on the news, on my other social networks, and it really has actually been pretty boring. The only major, major, major shakeups in the cabinet was Justin Greening, the education secretary, going. That was literally the biggest point of the entire thing. I really think that this cabinet reshuffle was just a conjunction to distract from the recent NHS crisis, which is hilarious because Jeremy Hunt didn't even end up going. May really should have sacked him, and in fact, she should have cancelled his appointment at the last minute just to add insult to injury because as we know this person is not fit to run an NHS no one who wrote a book on how to privatize healthcare is fit to protect our public healthcare it just doesn't make sense and when Justin Greening resigned from the education um, cabinet today teachers across the country probably were celebrating and dancing holding street parties because of the education secretary who has been overseeing all these cuts for education overseeing that schools are not given the resources they needed and teachers are having to pay for equipment and for stuff with their own money which is something that should never happen because the government should be funding our schools properly so this thing does not have to happen but this has not been happening and as i've said in previous videos schools have been facing loads of cuts but i really think that this cabinet reshuffle is not addressing the true cause of our country's problems because the true cause of our country's problems is this government because this government is not working for ordinary working people like me like you watching this for people all across the country because they are putting our private public interests first and not the interests of the working people. The only way to address these concerns and the only way to get more proper funding for our public services is to get rid of this Tory government. And this reshuffle of the cabinet is just a distraction from the inevitable. This government will leave office sooner rather than later, I hope. Also, I just want to quickly brush on Donald Trump's latest adventures on Twitter and as presidency. I'm really sick of talking about Donald Trump now, but these things just have to be addressed on the political ranter show. As we all know, Trump causes controversy every time he even opens up his Twitter app on his phone. So basically every five minutes. And... Recently, he has been tweeting at the North Korean leader, Kim Jong-un, about how his nuclear weapons and how his button to activate those nuclear weapons are bigger than North Korea's. So basically what he was doing is actually threatening to use nuclear weapons against North Korea. He probably didn't mean this literally, but you know, Trump, he doesn't think before he tweets. Trump is due to have a state visit to the UK. We don't know when this will happen and we don't know how this will happen or when, if it will even happen at all. But Theresa May has confirmed that it will happen happen eventually. Someone who has retweeted a fascist group from the UK, someone who has completely said Islamophobic things, racist, bigoted and other views should not have an official state visit to the UK. Someone who hurled abuse at our Prime Minister when she pointed out that he was wrong to do these things is now being granted a UK visit from that same Prime Minister. This is absolutely ridiculous and Theresa May really needs to grow a pair because this is just not working. I really do worry for the future of America and I really do worry for the future of the American people, especially while Trump's in office. What I want to happen is I just want either Trump to get impeached tomorrow, <laughs> that would be a great situation, or I just want him to ride out his term and then we'll forget all about him and then we'll get a decent president because it, I still want Bernie to run. I still want Bernie to be the president of the United States eventually. I. Uh, I don't know if he'll run again in 2020, I would want him to be the Democratic nominee for the Democratic Party in the US in 2020, but he is getting old, he is older than Jeremy Corbyn, he's in his 70s now, so by the time 2020 rolls he'll be even older, and many people think he won't even be fit to run the country then, so I don't know, will we have another one like but I hope we have another Bernie Sanders for 2020, but then I hope they don't lose to the other Democratic nominee who is more like Hillary Clinton. Not that I was the biggest fan of Hillary Clinton, but I did want her to beat Trump because anyone is better than Trump. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the show and this episode of my ramblings. I will see you next time, I really don't know when that is, but I'll see you next time. Have a good day.